Welcome back to Life and Style. This is Inspirational Thursday and I am with Kali. Right now we are motivated and we are all about organic food. What's the importance of organic foods? And I've got Dennis in studio to help us through that. And uh, Dennis, I tell all my guests this. Every Thursday is all about motivation and drawing inspiration from stories of your life. And I, I like to start all my conversations from that point. Your life and the relation, uh, what, what it, how it relates to the topic of the day, which is organic foods. Great. Um, I never thought was, uh, at any point that I'd be talking or... <laughs> Motivating. Food, you know, uh, oh, yeah. At any point. But, uh -huh. uh, the whole idea started way back, a couple of years, five, six, seven years back. Mm -hmm. And this was just a, as a result of my health condition. Okay. Um, way back, I think, 2009, 2010, 2009, 2010, there about, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed by an autoimmune disease, okay. uh, which is actually a very debilitating uh, health condition whereby your antibodies attack your healthy tissues. And for my case, it was my skin and muscles. And I thought it was something that was just going to go away, mm -hmm. but it never went away. Okay. So what happened is because of the effects of the steroids. How, let, let me just ask, yes. how did you even get to know, like, uh, this is how, this is what I have, because you, you must have had symptoms that uh, you could relate with and be like, maybe I have a headache here, then you go to the hospital and you're told this is not just a headache. So what was it for you? Uh, right now it sounds, uh, it sounds like a very short span, <laughs> but it was like seven months of Whoa. on and off. You know, okay. um, hospital visits, you try this, you try that, and nothing, you know, nothing is being discovered. What was the problem? Um, the problem is there was so much, there was severe pain all over. Okay. And with, within a short time, you know, it's like your muscles are weakening, you can't lift mm. your hand, uh, you can't run, um, you're getting tired so quickly. So those are some of the main symptoms. And, and just to take it like within that span, within seven months, I couldn't walk. I couldn't swallow my own saliva. Now it sounds, it sounds easy Look to say. Look at you smiling. <laughs> um, I couldn't touch the top of my head. I could not bat on my shirt. Um, the simple things. Simple things in life. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't do all those. And, and because, you know, we, we're kind of like fast guys and, you know, doing a lot of things here. So we were spending lots of time online uh, just checking what is this. We could not even pronounce it. It was, but then it was like, we were like dermatom or whatever, whatever, but it was dermatomyositis. Da so okay. that, that's the condition. But the skin beat was not an issue, but the myo was the main issue, which is the inflammation of the muscles. All right. So, and if you go do a little bit of more research on it, the first thing that you see, it's, it's incurable. Whoa. And uh, you, you did this research and you found that? Yeah, actually the first person to do the research was my brother who brought, like, uh, when I was still at my, uh, the hospital bed, he just brought uh, a couple of pages of the same condition and every page I was opening, it was saying incurable. it's incurable. So, and I was like, I, bet, I mean, I can come out of this thing because they're saying, okay, there's something that I can use. So, of course, the steroids and then they combine them with the immune suppressant and those are the two main drugs that I was taking. Okay. And in less than two months, things are getting worse. Two months, this is the condition, and then I've got two months where I'm taking my steroids and then my immune suppressant, and there was no any improvement. I wasn't, I wasn't eating, I wasn't swallowing, so I was on liquid diet, medicated liquid diet, and uh, within the two months then, you know, we did a couple of other research and we found, we suspected they could be having uh, diabetes. Okay. And I got another admission to the same hospital uh -huh. and outright I had developed induced diabetes. So with induced diabetes, then the doctors recommended, oh, I've got to start using insulin. So I would take 14 units times three. So I would see the effect, you know, the the amount of money we're using. 
yeah. in terms of dealing with the condition. Mm -hmm. So I was like, is there a way out? That was actually the question that I asked myself. Is there a way out? And online, of course. I'm just doing my little research, and then I bump into this line that says I could manage the condition by eating organic. And so the next question, what, what is organic? Yeah, that would that, be the that, next that question. That was like mm -hmm. the question. You know, so you'd think, oh, any veggie out there, you know, you'd go and ask and somebody would give it to you. Mm -hmm. So we went out there. We found everything that we wanted because I wanted to get now into food from my liquid diet now into actual food. Mm -hmm. And we would ask, is it organic? And then and Mama Mboga would tell you what. like, what do you mean? Well, tomato marikiti. Yeah, they, <laughs> and they would literally say, for us, we go to any, any market. It could be marikiti or where, kawangware. And they would select the good-looking veggies. And that's what they'd bring. And then that's what they'd sell. So they'd be like, I don't know where it comes from. But I hear it comes from Kinango, or it comes from Naivasha, or it comes from Meru. Or... So we'd, we couldn't buy anything. And... Just behind my house, there's a bigger patch of shamba. Mm -hmm. So we started growing our own food. Fast growing leafy veggies. That okay. would take a couple of weeks, months, and ready. And that's what I would eat. And surprisingly, every time I would eat that food, food that we knew how we, we've grown it, yes. without spraying harsh chemicals, without putting the fertilizers, you know, or, or the, let me call bad stuff. Mm -hmm. I was just feeling okay. And I was doing my hospital uh, checkups and all that to get the prognosis and all that mm -hmm. every two weeks. And you'd be surprised. Nothing was, nothing was being reduced out of the medication in the prescription. Yeah. Either it was still there or something was being added. added. And this prompted me to, you know, I, I, the way we would leave the, the consultation room and, you know, would knock, uh, I would knock my girlfriend and like, why, why is he not reducing instead Because you feel better. I'm feeling okay. And so I, to be very honest, I, I wasn't taking the add-ons. I wasn't taking the add-ons because I was actually fearing that the drugs would actually kill me and not the condition. Ah. That was my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. Because when I was doing my research, then I discovered, oh, because of the, the steroid that's supposed to deal with inflammation, and then I've got to get the immune suppressant. And then with the immune suppressant, then it's like you don't have a life. Yeah. You stay indoors. Don't be aware there are too many people. Uh, don't get a, co uh, whether it's a common cold or whatever. And, you know, with the steroids again, osteoporosis. Uh, I don't know you're supposed now, because you're using the steroids, then you've got to get vitamin D. And then I don't know you've got to get this. So it's like, you know, it's a chain. Yeah. This is what I call it. It's a chain in the medical field. Mm -hmm. As long as you put on one thing on a very long time, it's going to cause something. It's they going don't to have bring to take another something else for that so other you, thing. Definitely, that was they'll caused by the first yeah, one. Yeah, they'll yeah. prescribe another thing, yeah. and you'll take that to deal with that effect. Yeah. And because you'll be using this also for a very long time, it's going to bring something else. So you've got to. That's a chain so right it's, there. It just keeps going. It keeps yeah. going. It keeps going. And I said, you know what? This is. I think. It's enough. And because of the organic bit, and I'm eating, I'm feeling okay, the change was so slow that you could not notice. Because it took me two years, one month, to get out of insulin. Wow. And it took me two years, seven months, to start walking. Goodness. Okay. So, so all this time, all these years... All you did take in terms of food was organic. It had to be organic. Exclusively. And I was very particular. And I, I, and I say it even up to date. I'm very particular in what I eat. Where there are people, I eat for social reasons, but very cautiously. Okay. I just don't do it. Uh, because I know what the results are. Yeah. And you'll be surprised if I tell you, for three years, I've not seen a doctor. For three years, I've not seen a doctor. I never talk about my health challenges. Yes. And nobody can tell if I have any health challenge unless I tell them. True. All the guys who saw me before. before. Um, and this is the power of food. 
this led you to come up with organic uh, organic uh, market, the organic foods market. Organic farmer's market. Uh, organic farmer's, uh, yes. organic farmer's market. Yes. yes, Yeah, I know of one. Then you yeah. told me there's another one. I know of one in, uh, in Karen. Yes. So when did it start? So these markets have been in existence. Let me just put it that way. Okay. They've been in existence. But this particular one, interesting individuals came together with a common goal of we love good food, we want good food. But actualizing it has always been the main issue. That, that, that was the main issue. Mm -hmm. It was like that these markets that are on and off, somebody starts something, it dies, somebody starts something, it dies, mm -hmm. and I understand why they were dying. But because of my history with the health challenges and the, and the belief in good food, clean food, food with no chemicals, let me put it, harsh chemicals and yeah. harsh pesticides. Mm -hmm. Then we met and I said, I feel I can do this. I can take this to a different level because I believe in the entire concept. When I go to um, a market or a supermarket and I want to get organic food, what is it that I might, um, um, uh, what, what is it that, uh, that I might, uh, am I looking at? What am I looking for? And uh, as a farmer, how mm. can I make sure that, or ensure that whatever it is that I'm growing is organic? The right way is you've got, as a client, as a consumer, you've got to be involved in the process. Mm. And that's what we've done. Mm -hmm. that's, what we've, that's what we've done because if I put, let's say terraria, a bunch of terraria here that's organic and a bunch of terraria here that's not organic, you will not know unless you taste. Okay. Okay? okay. So what we do as the organic farmer's market is we are able to bring out the stories of good food. Mm. Now, this game is not about certification. Okay. Okay? Because as I told you, when I took over running of the markets, mm -hmm. there were people that were certified as organic farmers. Certified. Certified. That means, and that says, there's a professional who understands this, who visited your farm, who did whatever they did, okay. and they proved you are. All right. But for me, the game was more than that. Because when I took over the markets, I never bought from the markets. You still had your own shamba? I had my shamba, but I needed more assurance that what I'm buying is organic. Yeah. So, number one, uh, where's your farm? Simple question. I'd ask a farmer, where's your farm? And the farmer would say, this and this and this is a place. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, I'd love to come and visit your farm. The moment anyone who shuts me not to go to their farm, there's a problem. Absolutely. That's one. Two is, do they understand what they're doing? Mm. Do they understand what organic farming is? Yeah. Do they know what harsh chemicals are, harsh mm. pesticides are? If they don't know, then most of the farmers, not in a bad way, not in a bad way, illiteracy. Okay. In it a bit. Mm -hmm. So they would just go to the, any agrovet and say, oh, I've seen this. How do I deal with it? The agrovet would just pick something and like, take this, go mix with this, and then spray it. But if you spend time and read at the back or what that pesticide they have, is. They whatever. have a leaflet. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you read it, they say, wait for 21 days before you consume. Y yes, yes. How many farmers wait for 21 days? Those are precaution measures. They're telling you they've covered themselves. Two, if you're doing dairy, injecting the antibiotic, you're being told, don't consume the milk yeah. for this number of days. Don't eat, if you mm -hmm. slaughter, don't eat the meat for the, if you're doing your broilers, okay. chicken, stuffed okay. with antibiotics, mm -hmm. they tell you, wait for X number of days before you can eat. Now, typical scenario, the broiler is ready within, not even the usual way, our traditional roadrunner, <laughs> Kenyeji Kuku, goes for five, six months. Yes. Broiler, three mm -hmm. weeks even now. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ready, mature to eat. And you've given them antibiotics, slaughtered them. Now, different people prepare their food in different ways. Some will do it rare cooked or medium, medium cooked. Medium rare. Or oh, well done. Yeah. Oh, and goodness. you eat that. 
still there are components that have not, not been fully utilized. When do they go? Your body. In our bodies. Yes. And we would ask ourselves, why, why are we having lots of these health challenges and complications? It's because of what we are feeding our bodies. Mm. And this would be a game where for us to win, for us to stay healthy, mm -hmm. everybody has to go out there and demand and say, how was my skooma grown? How was my spinach grown? If there's no traceability, if they don't understand, don't buy. If we can all stop spending money mm -hmm. in these foods that are badly produced, they will not have a market. Dennis, do you think the amount, the, the supply is... Um, is enough for the demand if we stopped today and said, you know what, I have decided I'm going to go the Dennis way. If it's not organic, I'm not going to take it. Is the supply enough? No, the, is the supply enough? The supply is not enough because people are not asking. Okay. The moment we start asking, we'll start, we'll increase our production. All right. Now, what is happening is people are not demanding. People don't understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We only understand yeah. If you get in a situation where I was, one, if you're sick, two, if old age sets in, mm -hmm. that is when we think of eating well. <laughs> I wish, and, I, and the sick people should never be the people that spend money on oh, this food. Yeah. I want healthy people to be cautious, you know, to be careful, to, to start demanding, you know, it, where, where our kids are going to school? Can yeah. we start asking what our kids fed? Mm -hmm. Hospitals, can we ask? The same, same hospitals that are treating us, where are they sourcing their food? I think our bodies are our biggest wealth. The moment That's we true. start neglecting our bodies, then everything goes bad. I think I was pretty successful during my time, you know, um, and I was making good money, and I saw the entire amount of money just going into the hospital bills. Just to take care of myself. Yeah. You know, um, so it's, and you'll be surprised. Let me now link it now to what we actually do. Mm -hmm. I would fill tens of kasarani with farmers, but you'll be surprised if I tell you I've never reached 50. 50? 50. 50. Genuine, organic farmers. Whoa. For a simple fact. We love shortcuts. We yes. want quick money, and mm -hmm. we think we can make money through organic. Mm -hmm. I've kicked people out of markets. I've been taken to court. I've been given summons because, quote unquote, I'm not an expert in organic. Okay. But you see, organic is about fairness. It's about credibility. It's about doing it from the heart. Yes. It's not just about money. Money, and it's not just about the paper. But again, over the years, we've discovered you can actually create a business out of organic food because people out there will ask for it. It's true. But again, the main challenge, as I said, we love shortcuts. Every week, every single day, even by the time I got here, there, there's a farmer who just called me and said, how can I sell? But my next question is, where's your farm? I'd love to visit. They never call they, me again. They never call you back. They never call you back. And it's, it's a very important thing that you go through the certification, the, the certification, certification bit yeah. of it and just check out their farms it, to ensure that whatever it is that they're selling is um, organic and good for um, our consumption. Let's talk about the clientele that visit this market. So mm -hmm. right now, I know of Karen. You said you've got another one in Kilimani. Yes. And you make pop-ups uh, different, places different places all yeah. over the country. Mm. Uh, the clientele, the people who visit this market, is it a kawaida mwananchi? Because they'll be scared for the prices, thinking, mm. go current, if I have to go all the way to current, how much money am mm. I going to spend? That must be nyanya nyesia kawaida. It must be a bit mm. pricey, is it? There are two ways to look at it. Two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. One is, how do you value yourself? Absolutely. Would you eat crap? and keep spending, taking care of your good health. Mm -hmm. That is just one side to it. All right. Two, mm -hmm. it's affordable. Okay. It's affordable. The same, the same, what you'd pay out there, you'd pay when you come to a market. Okay. Three, um, let me say this. People, people sometimes label me as an advocate of high prices of organic food, okay. which is not. This is the reality. If it's too cheap, someone has been shortchanged. Okay. And in this case, it's the farmer for me. Mm -hmm. It's the farmer. 
let farmers be paid what they're worth. That's true. I remember very well my grandfather. Do you, if he prepares for the next planting season, he would select the good seeds if it's maize and then uh, remove this bit and this bit and then probably Place go them hang it somewhere. somewhere. Wait for the next, if, yeah. it's, if, if, if it's your um, beans, the same. Mm -hmm. And there's just a wave that came over and took over, you know, um, where now it's even illegal to do your own seed bank, okay? Uh, where, um, listen to the vernacular radio stations. Okay. They, they package, they package these fertilizers, these chemicals. Let me not even just call fertilizers, harsh chemicals and harsh fertilizers. They package them in a way that they, there's some, there's some nice marketing to this. Mm -hmm. Where it will increase the yield and it will do this and it will do that. It takes a shorter time and, in the, sh in the shamba. And people... Always say, you know, in the deep, deep rural areas, people are still practice food from there is clean, it's organic. It's not. Because these guys, they've even targeted the very, very poor farmer. Now they do sachets of 25, 15 bob, where even the poor farmer it's true. can still afford. Yeah. And you know what, to be very honest, in organic, we don't eliminate. You don't eliminate, you just manage. If it's your pests, you just manage your pests. Mm -hmm. They're there, but they're not doing any harm. And you use natural means, biological means. You, you, you use your pull and push factor. You know, you intercrop your, for instance, your dania yeah. or your, your, your spring onion mm -hmm. and then your herbs, you know. That's what you do. In organic, you feed the soil and the soil feeds the plant. Mm. What do we do? We've killed our soils. Yes. Now our soils are, and let me use my own example, my own dad, <laughs> my yes. own dad does not believe in what we do. If you don't give him 50 kilos of, I don't know, that harsh thing <laughs> and that harsh thing, he's not going to plant anything. So what, what has happened over the years? Mm -hmm. We've depleted all the nutrients, you know, nothing is in there. Now what happens, we'll still plant, but we've got to put things to support. The plants. The plants. But if, if you're using biological, you know, natural ways where you can combine your garlic with your chili papers and then you create some sort of concussion there and then you can spray your deal with your pests. It's, it's very important what you're saying that uh, you will deplete that land, put in the harsh chemicals. Uh, you will not read that you've been told 21 days, uh, do not consume until 21 days after using this and this mm. medicine. Mm. Then your, your vegetables, your onions are ready and there's someone at the gate looking to buy. You have two acres, I'll just buy everything. They buy everything, 21 days are not over. They go to the market, sell it to uh, the vendors, and you go to the market, buy that, and take it home. And you consume that. Yeah, and, and you know what? And there's so many, and, and I'll start blaming by us. Yeah. When oh, I say us. us I, I mean, you mean us black people? Us, us, <laughs> us, us real guys. <laughs> yes. You come to any typical market that I mm -hmm. run, mm -hmm. neighborhood where it's us who are there, and... I can literally count how many come back over and over. You'd come to these markets and you'd think you're in Europe. We don't go to these and markets. We've done lots of promotional videos and people would ask, why are you putting the other guys in this? Instead of and us. And I'd say, because they are the only ones who come to shop. <laughs> yeah. Now, how many, how many of us think deliberate and question what is going to be on the table. How many people care I mean, about when, when you say us, you mean us Kenyans. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. let me say this. If you know how it's grown, it resonates well on the plate. Absolutely. And I used to say, oh, you know, we, we, we're, selling, we're selling organic vegetables, <laughs> organic. I just discovered, and it took me long to discover this. We sell stories about good food or stories that relates to good food. Absolutely. And I think that's key. Um, and I enjoy when... The good food is the on good the plate. food, you know. To yeah. be very honest, me, I have meals. I, I have meals. In the morning, I have a meal. I'm not the, the chai and the colored bread guy. I would prepare whether it's my egg or... And I love doing it. And some people would say, you know, organic is boring. Organic is not exciting. Uh -uh. It's just the creativity. Let yeah. me tell you, you don't need recipes to enjoy this. Just get in the kitchen, try something. 
Okay, we need to bring this conversation oh, to yeah. an end, Dennis. Good. But people need to know, uh, when is this, uh, when is this uh, market day in uh, Karen, in uh, Kilimani, and where are these pop-ups? So our markets are, uh, the one in Karen has been there for seven years. Yeah. Every Saturday, without fail. Okay. At Paddy Arms Restaurant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful, it's nice, it's outdoor, no standards, but amazing. It's okay. got its own feel and romance. Pay a visit and see it. And then there's the Kilimani one. Okay. At Kilimani Primary. All right. Uh, we do a couple of pop-ups with Healthy You mm -hmm. uh, stores, the one in Karen and the one at, at, at Sarit. And why are we doing this? It's taken us years to take the next market somewhere else. It's, we're now taking the markets to where the communities are. Mm -hmm. So these markets are owned by the community. So. It's important that the community comes behind and rallies and supports what these people are doing. Absolutely. So, and we'll keep doing this, you know. Um, uh, and every market that we run has a cause to it. Has a cause to it. And we put our reputation out there, our consistency out there, mm -hmm. and it's attached to a good cause. For instance, the one that we do in, in Party Arms, mm -hmm. Half of the proceeds straight goes to support Thomas Bernardo children homes. They've got a couple of homes. Yeah. And our aim is just to ensure that the kids, that money is spent back in food. All right. And you'll be surprised. And the two-year-olds, all those, those abandoned kids, mm -hmm. that's what they're exclusively fed. And they've developed their own research to find out when the food is not there and they're given something else, what they happens know, to the kids. Exactly. You know. So what about the farmers out there? How can they get in touch with you? Probably they're doing organic farming or they would like to learn more about that. How can they get in touch with you as you bring this to a close? Two things. Mm -hmm. Kenya has so many farmers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not a, an opportunity for you to come and we hate policing. Okay. Otherwise, if, if you love shortcuts, if you love, if you think organic is the easier way for you to make money, money and lie to people, there's no room for that. Okay. So we take in conventional farmers. These are farmers that were practicing or are practicing conventional, but because they've discovered there's a way to go organic, we accommodate those people. We want them because without them, we will not find the, the organic guys. They mm -hmm. will, we won't find organic food. Okay. So we want conventional people who are ready to undergo through that transition and trans transformation right. to become organic. Mm -hmm. So. We, we welcome any, anyone, and for, the, for us, who are <laughs> naysayers, who don't believe that okay. this is doable, right. it is. And it's not, it doesn't rest with us, the guys mm -hmm. that run the markets and farmers. Mm -hmm. it, it's also about you, the client, wanting to know more about your food. All so right. it's, it's a chain. You know, it's like, it's, how do I call it? This is like, like super getting, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Any websites, anything? Yes. Okay, uh, maybe we can just give that so that people can get in touch with you. If if you go online, just if you uh, if you just go search organic farmers market. Yes. Nairobi. Yes. We pop. All right. Uh, Facebook, just go uh, organic farmers market Nairobi. You'll find us. All right. Um, and the easier way to know who we are, we have a B logo. And. For us, it's not just about safeguarding ourselves and all that. We want as many markets as possible. All right. But how it's done, I think it's more important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I hope that we'll get in touch with you. And, Super. Uh, well, kudos for, I think it's a good journey that you. Uh, Kenyans should take up. Thank you so much, Dennis. Well, like Dennis has said, your health is your wealth. And if you don't take care of it, then you're going to lose the vital importance. Like even scratching or buttoning your shirt, that is what happened to him, to him to re for him to realize that, you know what, I need to take care of myself in a better way. And if it means going the organic foods way, and that is what helped him. So you do not know what it is that will help you. But this has been seen to be working. This has been Motivate. I hope you learned a couple of things from that. Uh, we'll take a very short commercial break when you come back. It's all about books and blogs with Catherine Mwangi standby for a restaurant of the week. Mostly read, read and read. And read as many books from as many different places.